Welcome on GAM channel, please subscribe, like, share and comment to get more videos. Today you're going to know more about the history of Rwanda from pre-colonial period until today. Rwanda. Rwanda officially the Republic of Rwanda is a landlocked country in the Great Rift Valley of Central Africa where the African Great Lakes region in Southeast African converge. Located a few degrees south of the equator, Rwanda is bordered by Uganda, Tanzania, Burundi and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. It is highly elevated given the sobriquet, land of a thousand hills, with its geography dominated by mountains in the west and savanna to the southeast with numerous lakes throughout the country. The climate is temperate and subtropical with two rainy seasons and two dry seasons each year. Rwanda has a population of over 12.6 million living on 26,338 kilometers square of land and is the most densely populated mainland African country. Among countries larger than 10,000 kilometers square it is the fifth most densely populated country in the world. One million people living in the capital and largest city Kigali. The earliest form of social organization in the area was the clan. The clans were not limited to genealogical lineages or geographical area. The most included Hutu, Tutsi and Tkwa. From the 15th century the clans began to merge into kingdoms. One kingdom under King Gihanga managed to incorporate several of its close neighbor territories establishing the kingdom of Rwanda. By 1700 around eight kingdoms had existed in the present day. One of these, the kingdom of Rwanda ruled the Tutsi Nijinya clan became increasingly dominant from the mid 18th century. The kingdom reached its greatest extent during the 19th century under the reign of King Gwawiji. Gwawiji conquered several smaller states, expanded the kingdom west and north, and initiated administrative reform. These included Uhaki, in which Tutsi patrons ceded Kato and therefore privileged status to Hutu or Tutsi clans in exchange for economic and personal services, and the Wuretwa, a corvée system in which Hutu were forced to work for Tutsi chiefs. Gwawijiri's changes caused a rift to grow between the Hutu and the Tutsi populations. The Tkwa were better off than in the pre-kingdom days with some becoming dancers in the royal court, but their numbers continued to decline. The Berlin Conference of 1884 assigned the territory to the German Empire, who declared it as part of the German East Africa. In 1994, explorer Gustav Adolf von Gotzen was the first European to cross the entire territory of Gwawijiri. He crossed from the southeast to Lake Kivu and met the king. In 1897, Germany established a presence in Rwanda with the formation of an alliance with the king beginning the colonial era. The Germans did not significantly alter the social structure of the country but exerted influence by supporting the king in the existing hierarchy and delegating power to local chiefs. Belgian forces invaded Rwanda and Burundi in 1916 during World War I and later in 1922. They started to rule both Rwanda and Burundi as a League of Nations mandate called Rwanda Urundi and started a period of more direct colonial rule. The Belgians simplified and centralized the power structure and introduced large scale projects in education, health, public works, and agricultural supervision, including new crops and improved agriculture techniques to try to reduce the incidence of famine. Both the Germans and the Belgians, in the wake of new imperialism, promoted Tutsi supremacy, considering the Hutu and the Tutsi different races. In 1935, Belgium introduced an identity card system which labeled each individual as either Tutsi, Hutu, Tkwa, or naturalized. While it has been previously possible for particularly wealthy Hutu to become honorarily Tutsi, the identity cards prevented any further movement between the classes. The Belgium continued to rule Rwanda Urundi as a UN trust territory after the Second World War with the mandate to oversee eventual independence. Tensions escalated between the Tutsi who favored early independence and the Hutu emancipation movement culminating in the 1959 Rwandan revolution. Hutu activists began killing Tutsi and destroying their houses, forcing more than 100,000 people to seek refuge in neighboring countries. In 1961, the suddenly pre-Hutu Belgians held a referendum in which the country voted to abolish the monarchy. Rwanda was separated from Burundi and gained independence on 1st July 1962, which is commemorated as independence Day, a national holiday. Cycles of violence followed, with exiled Tutsi attacking from the neighboring countries and the Hutu retaliating the large scale slaughter and repression of the Tutsi. In 1973, Juvenal Habjarimana took power 
in military coup prohibited discrimination continued but there was great economic prosperity and a reduced amount of violence against Tuts. The Tkwa remained marginalized and by 1990 were almost entirely forced out of the forest by the government many became beggars. Gwandan's population had increased from 1.6 million people in 1934 to 7.1 million in 1989 leading to competition for land. In 1990 the Rwandan Patriotic Front RPF, a rebel group composed of nearly 500,000 Tutsi refugees invaded northern Rwanda from their base in Uganda initiating the Rwandan civil war. The group condemned the Hutu dominated government for failing to democratize and confront the problems facing these refugees. Neither side was able to gain a decisive advantage in the war but in 1992 it had weakened Habjai authority. Mass demonstrations led into a coalition with the domestic position and eventually to sign the 1993 Arusha Accords with the RPF. A ceasefire ended on 6th April 1994 when Habjarimana's plane was shot down near Chigari airport killing him. The shooting down of the plane served as the catalyst for the Rwandan genocide which began within a few hours. Over the course of approximately 100 days between 500,000 and 1 million Tutsi and politically moderate Hutu were killed in well-planned attacks on the orders of the interim government. Many Tukwa were also killed despite not being directly targeted. The Tutsi RPF and took control of the country methodically, gaining control of the whole country by mid-July. The international response to the genocide was limited with major powers reluctant to strengthen the already overstretched UN peacekeeping force. When the RPF took over, approximately 2 million Hutu fled to neighboring countries, in particular Zaire. Within Rwanda, a period of reconciliation and justice began with the establishment of the International Criminal Tribunal of Rwanda and the reintroduction of Gachacha, a traditional village court system. The genocide led to the massacre of approximately 800,000 Tutsi civilians by Hutu extremists, marking one of the worst genocide in history. Since then, Rwanda has been in state of repair and has made great strides in many areas of development. In particular, the Rwandan government notes 10 impressive improvements in Rwanda, which are the following. First, poverty is on the decline. In 2001, the poverty rate in Rwanda was high as 77 percent dropping to 55 percent in 2017 the introduction of the first five-year economic development and poverty reduction strategy in 2008 and the second five-year plan in 2013 largely account for this reduction two increasing life expectancy the Rwandan civil war had significant impact on life expectancy which fell to mere 26 years in 1993 since then the government has committed to improving the health and quality of life for citizens achieving a life expectancy of 69 as of 2019. 3. Rwanda is a leading country in gender equality. In the World Economic Forum 2017 Global Gender Gap Report, Rwanda ranked as one of the top five leading countries in gender equality alongside Finland, Iceland, Sweden, and Norway. Since the civil war, the nation has pushed for more female leadership in politics. As of November 2021, the Rwandan parliament has a 61% women-led majority. The world's highest rate of female representation in parliament. Rwanda has one of the highest rates of women participating in the labor force at 84% in 2019. 4. Unemployment is decreasing despite the COVID-19 pandemic. Before the pandemic, unemployment in Rwanda was steadily declining, dropping to less than 1% in 2019. Like many countries, lockdowns and other preventive measures for COVID-19 originally caused unemployment to skyrocket back up to 1.5%. 35 percent in 2020. However, Rwanda quickly bounced back. Employment rates rose from 43 percent in the second quarter of 2020 to nearly 49 percent in the third quarter. 5. Maternal mortality rates are falling. In 2019, the maternal mortality rate in Rwanda decreased by nearly 23 percent from 1,270 per 100,000 live births in the 1990s to 290. The significant decrease is largely largely due to innovation in the medical field which allow for better storage and delivery blood supplies, preventing postpartum hemorrhaging deaths in women. 6. Inequality is on the decline. Inequality is defined as disparities between individuals or groups in areas such as income, wealth, education, health, nutrition, space, politics, and social identity. Historically, Rwanda was home to some
some of the highest rates of inequality in Africa. However, this is changing. Over the past two decades, Rwanda has noted significant improvement in terms of access to utilities. Access to health care is also improving, although there are still disparities between urban and rural communities. From 2006 to 2017, inequality declined from 0.52 to 0.43 as measured by the Gini Index. 7. The Rwandan economy is growing. Prior to the pandemic, Rwanda was experiencing an economic boom. From 2000 to 2019, the economy grew by an average of 7.2% and the country's GDP rose by about 5% annually. Rwanda has put in place measures to control COVID-19 within its borders, resulting in an unsurprising 3.4 GDP decrease in 2020. However, the nation hopes to resume growth following the distribution of vaccines. 8. Land restoration. Rwanda also notes great improvements in terms of the environment. In 2012, the Rwandan government initiates the Green Fund, the largest investment fund of its kind in Africa. So far, the project has created more than 10,000 jobs and encourages rural communities to participate in agroforestry and reforestation. 9. Malaria progress. Medical improvements in Rwanda has reduced fatal malaria cases significantly in recent years. In 2017, the country experienced up upwards of 4.8 million cases but in 2020 cases dropped to 1.8 million. Malaria related deaths also reduced from 700 in 2016 to 148 deaths in 2020. Pain. Healthcare is universal. Macho Health is the name of Rwanda's universal healthcare system which was created in 2008. As of 2019, Macho Health covered close to 96% of the population. No only medical costs and providers providing services for even the most impoverished citizens of Rwanda. The COVID-19 pandemic and the repercussions of the war in Ukraine has created many new obstacles for Rwanda, but the land of a thousand hills is advancing nonetheless. Since the civil war and the Rwandan genocide against the Tutsi of 1994, the country has committed to recovery and restoration and has certainly exceeded all expectations. Rwanda is one of the most successful and fastest growing economies in Africa. These many improvements in Rwanda are due to the great resilience of the nation's people, a nation that will continue to rise above all obstacles. And thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment for more videos. Thank you.